thought I'd wait until the day after to do this video uh, just so you know I could rationalize uh, the defeat and see just how much of a meltdown it caused on Twitter yes I'm angry yes I'm frustrated but I look at the context of everything and yeah you wouldn't have thought that we won 5-0 five, five days ago with the way some fans are going on everything is so reactionary it really is yes I'm aware we've lost three home games in the Premier League already uh, we've played six games we've got a game in hand we've played three of the top six already and yes we've only picked up one point in those three games but again the pre-season we only had one week so the early results there yes the poor performance even though we won against Brighton um, the loss against Palace not so much the Spurs performance because that is just unacceptable regardless of fitness levels but yeah we were always going to have a slow start to the season like we did last season we started piss poor then as well and we still managed to come third you just have to rationalize everything of course I'm a United fan I want us to win every game especially when it's teams like Arsenal I despise Arsenal but you know you, sometimes you just can't and yeah I agree I, I you know then again, a, a lot of the fans that were being reactionary were uh, extremely delighted with the lineup. I was delighted with it too. They were like, yeah, this is perfect. This is absolutely brilliant. But I think Oli picked the wrong system today. We can play three or four different systems this season. Um, and yeah, I, I think the wing back system would have been better against Arsenal because the fact that we did play the narrow diamond. It restricted us really. They were e able to press very, very easily. They were able to control the midfield, even though we had four midfielders, because they were in such close proximity of each other and we didn't have any width. Rashford and Greenwood were isolated for large part portions of the game. Um, and yeah, I mean, Thomas Partey was definitely man of the match. That's the one signing that Arsenal have made over the last two seasons that, you know, I'm jealous of. Like, I really am. I rate that guy. He's done really well so far. And yeah, that's a phenomenal acquisition for Arsenal on deadline day. I can't even hate. But our system and the way we played, it, it made it easy for Arsenal, really. I'm not taking anything away from their performance. They deserved to win. It was a narrow win. Uh, we weren't dominated by a scoreline like uh, the goal that they got was a clumsy tackle from Pogba giving away a penalty it's a penalty of course and yeah Bomiang slots it away other than that despite their dominance Arsenal didn't really threaten too badly they didn't have too many clear-cut opportunities they were the better team though and they deserved the points I'm not trying to you know rationalize it any other way they deserved the win and they got the win it doesn't matter how they did it but yeah, in terms of United and everything, yes, I know we're 16th in the table or whatever it is, but it's six games in. At the end of the day, the table really doesn't matter at this stage. We have played three of the top six, which will be huge later in the season because we're still only... Let me have a look at the table now, actually, because I'm sure even with that loss, we're only about six points off the top or eight points off the top, something like that. I know we're lounging in 16th, but yeah. Right, seven... Uh, away from top four, we are six points off top four with a game in hand. So if we win that game in hand, we're four points off the top four. Uh, in terms of the league leaders, which at the minute is Liverpool, of course, um, nine points off with a game in hand again. So, you know, it could potentially be six points off. It it, it doesn't warrant the big, you know, ollie out agenda that keeps surfacing after every defeat. Can we just stop that, please? Like, Why? why is it every single defeat or poor performance most people just don't have an answer it's because they want Pochettino and you know I love Pochettino I think he's a world-class manager but do you not see some of the stuff that Oli has done behind the scenes and even tactically he's known as a man manager and that's his strongest asset of course it is but he's still tactically outclassed Guardiola and other managers as well tactically like the formations he's used the um the systems everything he does you know still need to develop and learn and i know it's united you want to win you you don't want to uh, afford time and everything but i i just i've bought into his philosophy and the players he signed the mentality around the club the players are a lot happier there's a better atmosphere around the dressing room everyone's fighting for each other yes there was a lack of that against arsenal but to be honest i think that was just because we were restricted a lot and Oli, again, yes, I know, picked the wrong system. And that's down on him. I, you know, the result is definitely, you know, Oli's um, problem, as well as the players, of course. But, um, 
Yeah, I, I just think it's an overreaction. And I feel like there's a lot of positives this season. You know, we've beat PSG, we've thrashed Leipzig. That's one thing that really annoys me. No other team in the world would go and beat Leipzig 5-0, get a narrow loss to Arsenal 1-0, and then, you know, calls be made for the manager to go out straight away and just... It, all of it, the negativity, the, the everything. Oh, we don't have uh, the players. We don't have all this. We don't have the uh, this. We don't know how to play all the players in the system. We've only got midfielders. Like, come on, man. I, I just don't get it. The the speed that things have turned. It's just, it's absurd. You can't go from like loving it and then fucking hating it and wanting Ollie out in the space of four days, which is when we played the two matches. You know, we've got a favourable run in now. Uh, let's have a look at the fixtures that we've got uh, coming up, actually. So, you know, in Christmas, we should be in a much, much better um, position because, let's have a look, matches, uh, no, not Premier League, God's sake, Man United fixtures. Let's have a look. But yeah, I'm trying to be rational. I, I don't want to lose against Arsenal, Spurs, Palace, whatever. Like, of course, I just, I'm trying to rationalise things so people don't go overboard like they always do. Like, at the end of the day, if we get a new manager, we're just going to go through the same crap and then we're going to you know, have to offload all the players, start the system again, the whole cycle will continue and then in three years, we'll be in the same boat. We'll want Pochettino out and then we'll want uh, Klinsmann in, uh, the Leipzig manager and uh, the same thing will just happen. But anyway, we've got uh, Istanbul, Everton, which yes, is difficult, but they've lost their last two, I think. They lost against Newcastle 2-0. Um, so... We'll see about that one. Uh, I don't know if Richarlison's still banned for that. Did he get two yellows or a red card? I'm not entirely sure. Then after that, we've got West Brom. We've got Istanbul again. Southampton, PSG, you know, fair enough. But if we do beat Istanbul twice, that means we're qualified in the Champions League anyway. So it doesn't really matter. West Ham, Leipzig, and then City. City's obviously the big one then. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of what you would call winnable games before then against West Brom, Southampton and West Ham. And the City game's not until the 12th. Uh, so hopefully then the lockdown ends and at least some fans will be allowed in because that one's at Old Trafford. But we'll see. Then it's Sheffield United, Leeds, Everton in the Cup, Leicester, Wolves, Aston Villa, Fulham. You know, there's still a lot of football to be played. And I just feel like after six games, fans are just too reactionary really too reactionary like you know just just give it time give it time we've got the system we've got the players um sorry we've got various systems that we can use and uh if tears didn't have covid i reckon we might have went with a wing back system that's the only issue with that system we don't have a lot of uh players that can play on the left wing back uh because shaw's much better in that system as a left center back and on show i think it, other than you know the arsenal game where to be fair i don't think he was too bad he wasn't one of the worst performers on the pitch uh yeah he, he's been really solid uh since we've got competition in with tears same with uh De Gea as soon as Henderson came in he, he's looked like prime De Gea again like he's looking at the top of his game again back like in 2015-2016 but uh yeah th there's a lot of competition for places and I, again I just I know it's hard. Honestly, it's a it's an alien concept to talk, to some, but just rationalize it and give time. Uh, crying out loud, it's an unprecedented situation in the world. Like it's just it's stupid. And again, we barely got any praise for winning five nil. I saw a Liverpool legend come out and say, "Oh, well, we were dominated for large parts of that game, yet they still managed to win five nil." How's that? Because we played well, mate, and we scored our chances. Like uh, We get so criticised for every little thing. It's just ridiculous. But anyhow, congrats, Arsenal. You deserve the, the win. I hate saying that. I hate Arsenal. Just fuck. Anyway, we better go out and win our next Premier League game as well as the game against Istanbul. And hopefully, you know, we'll see an upturn and then fans will realise that, you know, wow, why was I so reactionary?